This is uh, Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, today I'm continuing in the study of the book of John, and I'm going to pick up where I left off last time, chapter 12, beginning with verse 34. Uh, if you have not seen the previous studies on John, uh, I hope you will go back and watch this from the beginning. All the other videos are available on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher. All right, now I am a KJV firstist, so I will read it first in the KJV, and then if I think it may be helpful, I might look at it in the Amplified Translation too. Let's begin. Chapter 12, verse 34. The people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever. And how sayest thou, the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Uh, well, in the Amplified, it says it this way. At this, the crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ is to remain forever. How then can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Well, there's a lot of things they don't understand here, but they're saying we have heard from the law. Uh, see, right now, this is Bible has 66 books. 39 books are in the Old Testament. 27 books are in the New Testament. But um, the Old Testament is referred to as the law and the prophets. The first five books uh, of Moses are the law, and then the following books are the prophets. So they're saying that we've learned from Moses' writings about this uh this Christ, this Messiah that's going to come. Uh, but but who is the Son of Man? Maybe they're not familiar with this term, the Son of Man, and they don't know what he mean by, means by lifted up. Now let's look at this. Back to the KJV, verse 35. Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. Well, obviously, if we walk around in the dark, you know, you're going to, uh, you don't know where you're going. You could trip and fall into a ditch. You can, you know, you know, walk right into a tree or a wall. And you need light to know where you're going. And you need light to understand what's, what is real, what, uh, uh, what is uh, around you. And th this darkness, of course, is just, and light is a question of knowledge or no knowledge. Are you ignorant? That's darkness. Are you, are you, do you have light? Well, that's knowledge. You understand. And what do you need to understand? Who this son of man is and what does it mean to be for him to be lifted up? Um, and in the... Amplified, it, verse 35 says, So Jesus said to them, The light is among you only a little while longer. So Jesus is the light. He's going to be with them only a little while longer. Of course, he's, that's referencing his, his death, burial, and resurrection. Then 40 days walking among them uh, and glorified, and then the ascension. So only a short time is this Son of Man, this light, Jesus Christ, going to be with them. Walk while you have the light. Keep on living by it so that darkness will not overtake you. He who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. He is drifting aimlessly. So not only is it a question of ignorance, but it's also dangerous to, uh, you know, walk around in the darkness. Verse 36 in the KJV, while ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. So, 
throughout the last, uh, you know, few chapters, Jesus has uh, said numerous times that the, the Jews are seeking to kill him. And so he, he continues like uh, escaping and evading them, hiding out from them. And here again, it says that uh, he departed and did hide himself from them. Verse 37, but though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Well, let's see that, how that says it in the Amplified. This was to fulfill, no, verse thir, starting with verse 37, it says, uh, even though he had done so many signs attesting miracles right before them, yet they still did not believe and failed to trust him. Of course, it's talking about the people he's speaking to at this very moment. It's not talking about people as a whole. Many people uh, did believe. At that very time, there he had a lot of believers and, and followers. Uh, but this particular group of people, it says, they still did not believe and failed to trust him. This was to fulfill what Isaiah, so KJV calls it, it says Isaiah, but that's another way of, of uh, spelling or, or uh, translating the, the name of the prophet Isaiah. Um, this was to fulfill what Isaiah the prophet said, quote, Lord, who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm, that's the power of the Lord, been shown, unveiled, revealed? So the message, of course, is that the Christ, the promised one, has come. It is Jesus of Nazareth. And he is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, the Savior, um, uh, God manifest in the flesh, the one who will be lifted up. They still don't know what he means by that. And it says that, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been shown or revealed, which is the power. And so this power that he's revealed is through these miracles. Uh, that power of the Lord by performing miracles has revealed uh, these signs showing that I am the one. Look, I'll prove it to you by doing these miracles. Verse uh, uh, 39 in the KJV says, Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. Hmm. So in the Amplified, verse 39, beginning at 39, says, Therefore they could not believe, for Isaiah said again, quote, He has blinded their eyes and he hardened their heart to keep them from seeing with their eyes and understanding with their heart and being converted. Otherwise, I, their God, would heal them. So some people might wonder, I've wondered myself, why doesn't he want them to believe? Uh, he says, otherwise they would believe and they'd be healed. Healed, not in the sense of, uh, you know, healed from leprosy or healed from blindness as, as, as he's, he's already done, um, but healed in the sense of healed from the condemnation uh, of uh, the, the second death and, and the... Um, the, the being convicted guilty of sin, uh, they're healed from that. They're saved from that. Uh, why would he not want them to be saved? Well, God, the Bible says, God does not desire that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, so God does desire that we all put our faith in Jesus, but he also spoke in parables and he, it says here, how is it phrased? Um, 
He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart to keep them from seeing with their eyes and understanding with their heart and being converted. Otherwise, I, their God, would heal them. So uh, speaking in parables is one of the things he did so that they would not understand unless they were humble. But the problem with these people is that they were not humble. They were full of spiritual pride. Uh, they didn't even recognize that their need for a savior because they thought that they were following the law and that they'd be fine. They could plead their case before God and, and as the Pharisee did at the temple and said, uh, look at me, I'm glad I'm not like these other men. I fast and I tithe, I do all these good things. So these people were full of self-righteousness, spiritual pride, and didn't have the humble uh, condition that is needed for salvation. Before we can call on the name of the Lord and say, save me, we have to be humble enough to say, I need to be saved. Um, verse 42 in the KJV says, nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. <clears throat> so even some of the, the rulers of the, uh, the Sanhedrin, the uh, there were some among them, like we know Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea. We know at least those two uh, believed on Jesus. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. So the, the Pharisees, they were intimidating everybody, threatening them that you would not be able to be participate in the synagogue and they they thought that was necessary they thought they thought if we're out of the synagogue i mean we're definitely can be lost because you know salvation comes from practicing judaism uh and uh they they they, they thought that uh, uh by being religious and doing all these things like tithing and fasting and doing animal sacrifices and praying at the temple they thought there was some kind of a formula for salvation. Uh, you believe in God, plus you do all these uh, things that you know, uh, Judaism requires, and that's how you get saved. But they, uh, so they certainly did not want to be prohibited from going to the temple. Um, uh, the, the synagogue, I mean. Uh, 43, for they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. So they were more concerned uh, rather than being uh, right with God by trusting Jesus, by believing in him, they're more concerned about what the, the men, the leaders of the uh, Sanhedrin were going to say about them and, and their power to, to uh, kick them out of the synagogue. Verse 44, Jesus cried and said, he that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. <clears throat> So he's Jesus saying, if you believe on me, you're believing in God the Father, the one that sent me. Uh, and uh, verse 45, and he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. Now, this is likened to the verse where Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Father and I are one. And so this verse here is a person can get, it makes the same point. And, and he that seeth me, uh, he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. So if you've seen me, you've seen the father again. And this is a, one of those proof texts for, uh, you know, modalism, um, Sibelianism, the, the belief that Jesus is the father. He, instead of, taking Jesus' words, the Father and I are one, to mean that we are one God, we are one substance, we are one essence. Um, um, they, they take it to mean that we are one of the same person. They don't, uh, that's what modalism is. And this is a verse that some modalists would use to say, see, Jesus is the Father. Jesus is the Son. He just changes forms or modes of operation. Uh, so that would be contrary to the Trinitarian view of the Godhead. For verse 46, 
I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. <clears throat> yeah. Well, he, he uh, offers salvation to the whole world. To you right now, if you're watching and you have never gotten, quote, saved, unquote. What does save mean? It means that you're you're saved from something bad happening. Like if you were drowning and, and someone reached in and pulled you out of the water, they saved you from drowning. And that's you don't want to drown. It's bad. So you need to be saved from it. You can't get out of the water yourself. You need someone to pull you out. Well, uh, being saved in the sense of salvation means that that uh, you're not capable of, of uh, saving yourself. You need someone to rescue you. And that's what Jesus is, the Savior, the one who rescues, rescues us from this judgment, this condemnation. But he says, I, I came not to judge the world. See, he also said earlier that there, everybody's already condemned. You don't need to be judged because the default state of all man is condemnation. Jesus said, uh, if you believe in, in him, you're not condemned. But if you not believe in Jesus, you are condemned already. See, we're every person from the time we're born, we're in condemnation. We're condemned. We are lost. And that's why we need to be saved. Um, so uh, let me see. This is a. Uh, verse 48, he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. So you're going to be judged by Jesus' words. Did you believe him? Do you believe the words of Jesus? Do you believe the claims of Jesus? The claims were that... that uh, he is eternal. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Uh, it, 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 he did come down from heaven. He was manifest in the flesh. He, uh, he, he was God made flesh. The word became flesh and lived among us as uh, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of God, the savior. <clears throat> so do you believe that? It says, so that's what you're going to be judged by. Do you believe these claims? Uh, and it says, the word I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Verse 49, for I have not spoken of myself, but the father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. His commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak thereof, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. <clears throat> so Jesus is always... Uh, giving glory to the Father, saying, I'm doing the Father's will. Uh, I'm telling you what the Father told me to tell you. Uh, let me read these last three verses in the Amplified. It says, if anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge and condemn the world, that is, to initiate the final judgment of the world, but to save the world, whoever rejects me and refuses to accept my teachings has one who judges him. The very word that I sp spoke will judge and condemn him on the last day. For I have never spoken on my own initiative or authority. So he's always uh, referencing the father as the, the, the one that sent him, the one that's uh, told him what to say. He's only doing what his father's told him to do. 
but the father himself who sent me has given me a command regarding what to say and what to speak. I know that his commandment is eternal life. So it's not he's commanding that we get eternal life. He's commanding Jesus to teach them about eternal life, how to get it. By trusting Jesus, you get eternal life. So the father tells him, go tell the world that they can receive eternal life by believing in you and who you are and what you have done for them. So the things I speak, I speak in accordance with his exact instruction, just as the father has told me. Now, there are some footnotes here. Uh, verse 12, 3. Let me see. Well, I don't need to go there. That's in previous study. Verse, uh, verse 34 says, um, at this time, the crowd does not understand that Jesus is speaking about his approaching crucifixion and resurrection. That's verse 34. That's referencing when he said that he will be lifted up. Uh, let me read that again. The people answered him, we have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever. And how sayest thou the son of man must be lifted up? Who is this son of man? <clears throat> lifted up just means that he was crucified. He was nailed on a cross and then the cross was lifted up and Jesus is hanging on the cross elevated. And Jesus said, uh, just as Moses, uh, Moses lifted up the brass serpent on the pole, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. And uh, so uh, this uh, lifting up is his uh, referencing his crucifixion. Okay, I'm, I'm going to stop at the end of this chapter and uh, pick up with chapter 13 next time. But let me take a moment here. It doesn't take long to teach you about salvation. If, if, if you ever see a video that says how to be saved and the video is an hour or two hours long, then you might as well just skip over the video. Don't bother watching it. Because if, if someone thinks it's, it takes an hour to teach someone how to be saved, then uh, it's a false message. Because salvation is simple and it's easy. It's so simple, a little child could understand it. It's so easy that anybody can do it. So this is it, a salvation, eternal life in heaven, being able to go to heaven after you die and live in heaven, which is really the new heavens and the new earth. We'll be, li we'll be living heaven on earth, a paradise on earth forever and ever. If that's what you want, you don't, you don't attain that through your own efforts. You don't receive it uh, as a, a reward for your good works. It's not earned through working or making your own effort. It's not based upon personal merit. That's the first thing you need to understand. You need to reject that. But all the religions of the world teach that if you're religious enough, if you're good enough, then God will accept you. But that's a lie from the devil. What you need to understand is that it's impossible. That's what the apostles said to Jesus. They said, well, based on what you're telling us, Lord, how is it possible for anyone to get saved? Because Jesus was making it clear to them that it, it, it's, you, you'll fail and you fail and you fail. No matter on all these people that they think are really good, he says, they fail, they fail, they fail. Everybody's failing. And they say, well, how is it possible for anyone to get saved then? And Jesus said, with man, it is impossible. You understand that? It's impossible for you to get into heaven through your own efforts. It's impossible. So you need to just throw up your hands, admit defeat, surrender, and say, I give up. I can't do it. I'm drowning, and I can't save myself. I need someone to save me. And Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is the one and only Savior. 
Jesus said, I am the way. He didn't say I'm a way. He didn't say I'm one of many ways. He said, I am the way. The one and only way to get into heaven. I'm the truth. He is the truth that you need to believe. You need to believe who he is and what he's done for you. And that salvation is a free gift. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. I am the life. I am the source of life, he says. I am the sole source of life everlasting. And then he emphasized, he said, not only am I claiming I'm the way, the truth, and life, but no one comes to the Father except through me. That's an outrageous, outlandish claim. You, I'm the way to get to heaven, and you can't get there any other way. Imagine if anybody today made that kind of claim. You'd say, they're crazy. They're an egomaniac. They're, or you, you could believe them. And that's what you need to do with Jesus. You need to believe his claims are true, that he's the way. The way to heaven is not through practicing religions and becoming very religious and going before God and say, didn't I do great, God? Don't I deserve heaven? That's not the way. The Bible says they seek to establish their own righteous as the mean, righteousness as a means of salvation, but that's man's way. It's not God's way. God's way is trust Jesus. Believe who he is and what he's done for you. Who is he? God, who became a man, who died on a cross and paid for all of our sins. Sin is not the issue between man and God any longer because Jesus paid for our sins. Say, thank you, Jesus, right now. Thank you for dying for my sins. Sin is not the barrier between you and God. You can come to Jesus because he paid for your sins. And then it says he was buried. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. This resurrection from the dead, bodily resurrection, is, is the sign that Jesus promised to prove his claims were true, to prove he is God. He is the Savior. He is the sole source of life everlasting. The resurrection proved it. And after he was raised bodily. He walked among 500 witnesses for 40 days. They saw him, they talked to him, they touched him, they ate with him. And it's that bodily resurrection that gave the apostles and the early disciples the, 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 the proof that they needed this. He is God and savior. And they worshiped him and they trusted him and they were willing to die for their faith because he proved it to them. And it's that resurrection that gives me confidence that my faith in Jesus is justified. Will you put your faith in him now? Will you reject every other way to get to heaven and say it's all hopeless? Any other way is hopeless and you need Jesus. When you trust Jesus, you're guaranteed you're going to go to heaven. That's what it, the Bible says. It says he promises you life everlasting when you trust him, and the Bible says, God cannot break a promise, God cannot lie. So it should be very comforting, very assuring to for you to know that you have heaven uh, guaranteed to you. It's a certainty because you've trusted Jesus and he is faithful to keep his promise. Thank you for watching this uh, Bible study. Hope you'll join me uh, for... Uh, the next one, uh, bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.